Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and this is a public service announcement. It's somewhat ironic that I have to make this video and that you're watching this video because chances are, if you're watching this video, you already know what I'm about to tell you and you probably even agree with me. However, I've noticed this semi-weird trend recently where people seem to be buying short rifles for their first rifle. And I'm just not really sure why, and so I wanted to take a minute to explain this. Maybe it's because of Instagram, or people have been watching too much T-Rex arms, or something, I don't know. I mean, I like to watch a lot of T-Rex arms, but this short gun trend is just weird. And I'm not entirely sure people understand the purpose of short guns. So, let's just understand how the AR-15 works and why, right? The AR-15 uh, fires the 223 cartridge. The 223 cartridge is velocity dependent. It's a velocity dependent round. What does that mean? Well, what that means is, is that the bullet itself is very small. It, it, it's a 22 caliber bullet. I mean, it's 55 grains. Maybe if you're shooting like mil, mil spec, you know, you're like at 62 grains. Maybe you're gonna shoot some of the heavier 70, maybe even like, I think you can push up to 80 grain stuff. Um, but in general, most of us, right, we're, we're buying 55 grain bulk, as cheap as we can get it, bullets. And a 55 grain round, again, not that small, it's a 22. Your nine millimeter for comparison is probably, you know, 115, maybe 124, if you're real fancy, maybe it's 142 grain. But it's at least half, maybe pushing a third the size of your handgun bullet. So it's not that big of a bullet. What makes a rifle round so incredibly effective is not bullet size, it's velocity. It's go that bullet is going so fast that when it hits, it just does so much carnage. And that's, that's how the AR-15 round works specifically, as compared to say like an AK round, which is over 100 grains. And those things are moving a little slower. Usually they're moving around like 2,300 feet a second, right? Uh, 22 compared to like an AR-15, which is moving like 3,000 feet a second. And the velocity is what makes it so much more effective, okay? You need to understand that. Now, what gives the bullet velocity? What gives the bullet velocity is a longer barrel. I'll put a screen overlay here somewhere when I'm talking right now. And that's gonna show you that a, out of a 20 inch barrel, which is typically the longest barrel that we're gonna use these days, uh, I mean, that sucker is cooking. Like, it's moving. A 20 inch AR is the creme de creme of Thump City, okay? That thing is gonna move. And most of us will come in around the 16 inch mark, right? And after a 16 inch barrel, the velocities start dropping significantly. And so when you get down to that 10.5, 11.5, whatever, you are giving up a lot of velocity and a lot of performance out of the round. Now, listen, let's be clear. Shortguns have killed lots of people in the world, okay? It's not that they're not deadly, it's that you are purposely um, undercutting the full potential of the round. Now, you might say, well, why would anyone ever do that? There are reasons to have short guns. And I don't even think it's, it's CQB stuff. I mean, that's kind of the main go-to that people have, right? Oh, I'm gonna be inside a structure, so I want a short, build, short barrel around cars and structures, whatever. I, I honestly, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. What I do think uh, short guns shine is when you start needing to put a bunch of stuff on the gun, right? When you're talking about a suppressor and a light and a laser, that stuff gets heavy. And not only is it heavy, the further it is away from your body, right? If I have a longer rifle, the further it is away, it's a third class lever, it's gonna be heavier because I gotta support that weight all the way out here from my body. Versus a shorter gun, not only do I lose the weight of the extended rifle, but when I start putting all those doodads on the gun, the gun itself is closer to me and so it's easier to hold. So that, I think, is where short guns really shine. Because if, if you're doing a short gun properly, yes, you're saying, listen, I understand I'm giving up a, some full potential performance of the round. However, in my mission set, I run night vision a lot. So therefore, I need a laser. And the laser that I have, it's just too heavy to have on a big gun, 
right? And I like to run a really big can because I like decent sound suppression. And that's just too big to put on a normal 16 inch gun. So I chop it down to, you know, 13.7 or 11.5 or whatever. I put a honking can on it. I put a laser on it. I put a nice light on it. And now I can still move and walk and hold that gun for a long time without tiring as quickly. And so that's why we typically go to short guns. I didn't start going to short guns until I started running night vision. Uh, before then, even, you know, I had a K-cam and I put on a 16 inch gun and I'd be like, let's just go, right? Because whatever, I still got a light on it, but it's not that bad. Once I put that laser out there, because I have a D-ball D2, that's what kind of tipped me over the edge because that thing is a chonk monster and it was just too heavy. So that's when I started moving to shorter guns to accommodate all that stuff. But before all of that, I definitely preferred the 16 inch gun because it has thump power, right? It's sending that round out faster. I was on the range the other day with my buddy and he was zeroing one of his short guns and I was zeroing one of my 16 inch guns. And then at the end we were just shooting a little bit of steel for fun. And uh, he even mentioned it. He said, you know, you can really tell the difference when it hits that steel between my gun and your gun because that extra, you know, four or five inches of length in the barrel makes a big difference. So you get what I'm saying here that that matters. And having the shorty short gun isn't necessarily better if you're not getting those other trade-ins for it, right? Again, it's a trade-off. We have to understand that. And when you're making the trades because yes, I want a can and I want a light and I want a laser and I want all this other stuff, then hey, I get it, that makes sense. But if you're just buying a shorty gun because you think it's cool, I mean, okay, well, look, it's America. You can do whatever you want. You can own whatever gun you want. But I want you to understand what you're giving up there. And if you're just giving up the velocity, but you're not putting all the other stuff on it, then I would say, hey, what are you doing? Just buy a full 16-inch gun because that's going to be better for you as far as getting the full potential out of that round if you're planning on using that gun to save your life someday. I would just like to say too, listen, if, if the whole world falls apart, uh, I'm probably grabbing a shorter gun, but that's only because I plan on running night vision. If the whole world falls apart and I don't have night vision, I'm probably grabbing the biggest gun with the longest barrel I can because I want the most boom, boom, pow that I can get out of that rifle. Anyways, I hope this is helpful. I hope this gives you some understanding and context for why we would run a shorter gun versus a bigger gun and it helps you better define your mission set and what it is you're trying to accomplish with that gun. Do brave deeds and endure.